<clears throat> hey guys, check it out. Today I got a quick tutorial for you in Photoshop. We're going to put together a retro glitch text effect by stacking together a few filters onto smart objects inside of Photoshop. Without wasting any more time, let's go jump into Photoshop and I'm going to show you how I built this effect. Okay, in Photoshop here, we're gonna hit Command N to pull up the new document window. And no real reason, we're just gonna create a 30 by 30 square. You feel free to make whatever size you want. Oh, it's on my other screen. Let's pull it over here. There we go. And the first thing we're gonna do is go to the filter drop down menu here and go render fibers. And you wanna increase the strength of this and you want to increase the variance somewhere around there looks good and we're gonna hit okay now i'm in the latest release of cc so it's 2019 version so they've done something really weird here where the transform you no longer have to constrain it with shift which is like muscle memory for me now but anyway if you hit command t to pull up your transform um, handles here no longer need to hold shift to constrain it but you do need to hold alt if you want to constrain it to the middle of your canvas so we'll do that make this larger and then we're gonna rotate it and this time you can hold down shift to constrain the angle of that rotate rotation to 90 degrees and like that you've got your the basis for your glitch background so what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna save this out and we'll just call it glitch texture and say, save. I'm gonna replace what I already had there because I've done more than one take. And this is gonna be the basis of your displacement map that you use later on. So we're gonna create a new layer over here and we're gonna fill it with black because I've got black as my foreground color over here. You can use the keyboard command for fill, which is option delete. And we'll change the layer order so that the glitch is on top. And we'll go and change it to soft light on top of the black. So it looks something like this. Now, if you hit T, it pulls up your type tool and you can click anywhere on the canvas. And we'll just for this tutorial we'll we'll type out glitch g-l-i-t-c-h and we'll make sure that that type is white and we will scale it up without holding down shift which is really weird for me okay don't like that i want something a little bit thinner for this so i'm going to use din condensed bold i think that looks good Let's center in our canvas and we can scale it up even more for this demonstration. Maybe a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll just zoom in. That's, that's another way I can make that look better. Okay, so we've got our white type and our background. We could just group this and get it out of the way and call it background. Now our glitch type here, we're gonna add the first smart filter to it. So to do that, we're gonna leave the type live and we're gonna go filter, distort, displace. Now what you wanna do is use this option over here where we say convert to smart object. And for the scale of our displacement, the horizontal scale, we can go out to like say 14. And our vertical scale, we don't want to be as large because we want more of a side to side glitch effect. So we'll say three for that. And if you hit okay, it takes you to the next step where you select the texture you created originally. Now this file we saved separately so that it's the same size. That's important that your displacement map and the document that you're trying to use it on are the same physical size. So we'll select that open and we get our displacement because it's a smart filter you get a mask and this eyeball um, icon so you can turn it off to preview what the original type looked like and you can also with the mask selected 
you could use your marquee tool and create these rectangular masks so you can option delete to fill those with black which reveals the original that was underneath so we could just tastefully mask off the effect a couple different times like this and that's looking cool now we can create a copy of this layer and we can now stack a few more um, distortion filters on top so we're going to go filter stylize wind and we want to use blast and from the right works for this so let's hit okay and we can filter that again and the smart filters will stack just to push the wind out further three times should be good and what we'll do for this is we'll mask the whole layer we'll just fill that with black and then we'll use our marquee our m what is it rectangular marquee m and we'll select a few spots here like this and we'll fill this with white which is command delete and we can reveal some of this wind that we created these longer sections of distortion so that this is a matter of personal preference taste you want to take it as far as you feel comfortable with and that's cool now both of these layers here we're going to group those together and we're going to mask them and we're going to put in an ever so slight nice thin little slice here and fill that with black in the mask another one up here would be cool now that we've got our base white text created we'll copy this group two times the middle copy here i'm going to apply a color overlay layer style to it and i'm going to make this a nice magenta and then the bottom one i'll apply another color overlay layer style too and i'll make this cyan cyan blue teal and using the move tool which is v on your keyboard we'll tap the blue layer over to the right a couple pixels and then up a couple pixels and the pink layer which was the middle one here or magenta and the v tool selected we'll tap it over to the left and down a bit and it creates that kind of color vibration effect which is part of this look and we could just name our layers here to make things easier for us in the future it's always good to be organized when you're working in a document Now, one of the neat things with this effect, I, I'd say it's done. I mean, you can go into it and add some more distortion and stack a few more filters and slice it up uh, as you see fit. But I'm going to call this one as it is. But I just want to show you one more thing. So your original text was a smart object and then you've copied it. All of those copies relate back to the original smart object. So if you double click on one of them, it takes you to your text clean how you started and it's still live so you could come in here and you can change uh, from din to helvetica you could change the scale of it just so that it fits back in the canvas here otherwise you'll lose some of it you could even change what this type says you could call it something else altogether or types type out something else altogether and then you can save this Command S on the keyboard, and your original document will update automatically. So it's uh, effectively you you can create a template, and you can come back in and change your text, and have a whole bunch of different versions created without having to go through all those steps again. So just a handy use of smart objects, and uh, something I thought I'd share with you at the end here. So I think that's it. So that's it. It's uh, 
that's my analog text effect in Photoshop. It would be great if you could let me know what you think in the comments down below. All the feedback that I've been getting so far is positive. There's been a bunch of constructive things in there and I, I've really tried to work on um, the channel as a whole. I really appreciate all of that feedback. Um, if you guys want to subscribe to see what I've got in store, it also means a lot to me. I'm trying to grow this into something bigger. Uh, that sounds really lame. I'm just trying to make videos. I mean, that's, that's all there is. I learned a lot from YouTube. I'm trying to give back and, and teach people um, the skills that I've picked up over the years. So anyway, if you're interested in that and you want to subscribe, I would really appreciate that. If you got any comments, leave them down below. Suggestions for future videos, that would be great too, because I've got all kinds of ideas in my head, but I don't know um, what would be interesting or useful to you guys. So if there's stuff that you're having trouble with or things that you want to kind of reverse engineer, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to try and get to them and put together, um, put together a video. Um, anyway, see you in the next one, hopefully. If, yeah, hopefully. See ya.